Well, that sucked, didn't it? <laughs> Welcome back to TOC. Um, I'm Taroncelli. How do you do today? I um, I know I'm a bit late posting this one, but I needed a few days to reflect. I needed a few days to myself, just to contemplate everything that's gone on. Those of you know, Sunday, a day that will live in infamy. We got to the final of the Euros, and we lost. England lost on penalties. Um, not gonna lie. Well, it was pretty shit that it happened, but you know what? We're proud that they got there. Why couldn't we win? I, we were so close, so fucking close. However, so let's just—I mean, I'm going to quickly dissect the match. Like, look, I'm going to be honest. I, you know, my last video, I was talking about how we've got to back Southgate. We've got to back him up. He's—he's he's doing the job. Yeah, I feel that he kind of dropped the ball in this game slightly. You know, he—if um, you mind the pun, football dropped the ball. Ooh. Well, he didn't, didn't want to drop the ball. He didn't, anyway, fuck it. So he um, basically the as the game went on, you could tell that we needed to make a change. Mancini was smart. He, Mancini, Italy picked up a couple of injuries, but Mancini from like the 55th minute was starting to make subs, started to change the team up, and then Italy dominated us from the, in the second half. I mean, when that when Shaw scored that goal in the first half, oh my. God, I about pissed my pants. It was amazing. I mean, I, my voice is just recovered. That's part of the reason why I didn't do this video, because my voice is only just recovered. But prior to this, um, yeah, first half, I thought we were great. You know, we were, first 20 minutes, we were smashing it. Italy looked like they were lost. Italy was like, well, England were playing. I was like, is this England I'm watching? I, they were playing it off the, they were playing Italy off the park. They were brilliant. But then it all went to shit. So when the second half started, you could tell that Italy came out with a different mentality. And England just decided to sit back to protect that 1-0 lead. Which wasn't good, because you know, Italy are going to come on the attack. And Mancini, like I said earlier, was bringing on, bringing on the subs. And it came to about the 60th minute, and I was watching it with my mate. Because I watched it at home. <laughs> I didn't go out anywhere. I watched it at home, and I was with my mate, my brother, and my dad. And we watched it. And we knew around then, the last 60th minute, that we need to make a change. You know, bring Grealish on, bring Henderson on. You know, we were like, we need to make some changes now because this is not looking good. And then um, we we didn't. We waited too long to make a change before we brought Henderson on. Then in extra time, I believe we brought on Grealish. And, and then we were playing for penalties. Southgate, he does remember what happened in 96. He does know that England have never been good at penalties. Yeah, we beat fucking Colombia in the World Cup, but who gives a shit. We're not good at penalties. Why play for them? And then, um, fuck it. It just went to shit from there. And he brought on Rashford and Sancho just to take a penalty without one minute to go. But if I'm going to be honest, if he was going to bring on Sancho and Rashford, bring them on at the start of extra time if you're going to wait for them. Because... Sancho is one of the most creative players you're going to see in the Premiership. When he goes to Man United, you're, people who don't know Jadon Sancho now are going to be like, whoa, who is this guy? Because he is going to light up the Premiership. As for Rashford, it would have brought in some... Rashford is known for his pace. So he would have brought in some new pace that the Italians were just... Because they were starting to get tired as well, but Rashford would have brought that pace in that we would have needed. But then, okay, we know what happened. Rashford, Sancho and Saka took their penalties and they all missed and people are asking like why should they have taken it Saka's only 19 I think Sancho's only about 20 21 same with Rashford basically kids and to be fair yeah they shouldn't have taken it and Saka he just because he wants he may have wanted to take a penalty but then it's up to Southgate to say just because you want to take a penalty I don't think you're the right man for the job right now because can he maintain that pressure? Can he, as good as he is on the ball, Saka, can he keep his nerve when it comes to taking the penalties? Because at the end of the day, he is still very young. He's 19. The kid's 19 years old. And then we all know what happened. Uh, went to penalties. Harry Maguire scored his, which I was surprised about. I mean, <laughs> we always see Harry Kane scored it. And when Maguire stepped up, I tell us, my mate, what? Has Maguire 
ever taken a penalty? I was like, I have never seen Harry Maguire take a penalty before, until then. Little did I know, because he smashed it, literally smashed it in the back of the net. And what was I doing at 19? I was, I was at uni and I was getting turned down by girls. I was doing nothing to contribute to society, believe me, I was doing absolutely nothing. And this guy is standing in front of the whole world, representing his nation, taking a penalty! And then, obviously all the shit's happened afterwards. I mean, some people who now, you know, they defaced Rashford's, um, like, I don't know what it's called. Because <laughs> there's this big mural of uh, Rashford in his hometown, and they defaced it. I mean, what, what a piece of shit thing to do. I mean, everything this guy's done during lockdown to, for like the hungry kids, for the kids at school meals, he's, you know, he's done, and the thing is though, he probably did a lot more for those kids than the people who defaced his mural. <laughs> and then the people being racist to the, those three, Rash was probably done a lot more to help their kids as well. As for Saka and Sancho, I mean, come on now, you know, like, how would you, the thing is though, how would you feel if somebody came up to your kid and just started giving them shit? You wouldn't think it's nice, would you? A lot of people are saying that a lot of the abuse came from abroad. But then that doesn't justify it. You know what I mean? It's just... It doesn't justify anything. Why does it have to still come down to this? Why is it that this happened and now we have to go back to race? Why is it racism is the first thing that these people have to turn, have to, turn to? You know what's really sad about it? When it happened, I turned to my mate and went, oh, I bet now we're probably going to see some racism. And my mate went, yeah, probably. And look what happened. Because we knew. I, I make out that we were joking about, but we knew. We knew that people will resort to that. And they're trying to go for a bid for, uh, I think it's the 20, ooh, 2030 World Cup um, for Great Britain. Um, because now that's what you do, you have multiple nations. Because there's going to be like 64 teams in that World Cup. And do I think that Britain deserves to host a World Cup? I mean, yeah, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a World Cup in England. I'd love to see a World Cup in Scotland and in Wales. I'd love to see it. Because I'd love to like, because you never know, there might be a few games in Leicester. There might be a few games that I could go to. But after what I saw from the England fans who were trashing London, who were being racist to the players, who were just being completely out of order. I mean, some of them were breaking into Wembley. You know what I mean? They were breaking into Wembley. They were trashing up the city centre in London. You know what I mean? It's like, if that's how you're gonna be, do you deserve to have a World Cup on your doorstep? We've got the Euros final as like a showcase. We want to show ourselves, like, look how great we are, look how good we are, look how sensible we are. And these are the fucking louts that we have to deal with. And it just gives us all a bad name. I mean, we thought it was funny that, you know, when we see the Scottish fans, like, they're having a good time and everything. But then the Scottish fans, when they were done, they were done. You know what I mean? They didn't, they didn't start attacking people. Yeah, they were enjoying themselves, but they weren't being abusive. Like, after the England game, after England lost to Italy, a few Italians got attacked by English fans. I mean, I know, I get it, it can be tribal and stuff like that, but is that really how you want to represent this country? It's not how I want it to be, want it to be represented, not at all. So, okay, overall, the, the sad thing is, the game was, gr the game, let's be honest, it wasn't the best performance by England. England performed much better throughout the tournament. The final, the kind of just, I don't know what it was. Tactically, the, Southgate got it wrong. Simple as, he got it wrong. And But the thing is, fair play to Southgate, he holds his hands up. He says, like, you know what? I got it wrong today. Fair play to him. But, as a tournament, and I might be biased, being an England fan, but this is going to go down as probably my favourite Euros. Then people say, like, Euro 96 and stuff like that, but I don't... I was five when it was Euro 96. So, um, I don't remember it that much, but this is going to go down as my favourite Euros, because it was just such a good Euros to be a part of and to watch, and it was just great to see it. It was amazing, and, and I enjoyed it, and I'll always remember it. Partly, but let's face it, it's because England got to a final. That's why I'm going to say I loved it. Maybe we were jumping the gun a little bit with all the coming home kind of sayings, and like, you know, I even saw Frank Skinner and David Baddiel singing it on the last leg. You know, it's like, maybe we were a little bit jumping the gun. However, it was just nice to be part of it. It was, it was, it was nice to be part of the atmosphere. As for this England team, I think 
this is the start of something special actually. I think we've got the quality to go on to do even better. And even better is win it. We could go to this World Cup. I think we've got a team that could make the final of the World Cup and make the final of Euro 2016. 2016? What the fuck am I on about? 2016? 2026? I do apologise. <laughs> is it 2026? No, it's Euro 2024! What am I going on about? What happened to me in dates these years? These years? These days? It's been a long day. But I think that this England team could go on to do really fucking well. I actually do. And I think we could see some silverware for this England team. Because they're, they're quality side. They're really good. And they're only going to get better because they're really young at the moment. So they're not even hit their prime yet. They're not even peaked as a team yet. So who knows where they're going to go. I think they're going to be a class act. And I can't wait to see where this team goes. And it's um, whether Southgate's the right man for the job. Look, let's face it. We've been in a semi-final and we've been in a final. Thanks to Southgate. Let's be honest now, we can't really ask for more. Well, we can. We want to win something, but I think it might happen. Also, here's a fun fact, the home nations never usually win in the Euros. If you look at this one, yeah, England were the, home, the host nation, and they lost. In the last Euros, France were the host nation in the final, and they lost to Portugal. I remember back in the day, Euro 2004, Portugal were in the final, and they were hosting the Euros, and they lost the final. Before that, the Euros in two, Euro 2000, it was, be, it was hosted by um, Holland and Belgium. The furthest one was Holland. They got to the semi-final, they got knocked out. And uh, Euro 2012, the host nation went out. You know, same with Euro 2008, they didn't win it. You know what I mean? It was um, Austria, Switzerland, they didn't win. Even Euro 96, England were hosting in. England didn't win. So the host nations never tend to win the Euros. The best the host nations ever do is actually get to the final. So this is actually, England of anything, just gone with the program here. However, if you look at France, for example, they were a young team at Euro 2016. They lost in the final, but then two years later, they went on to win the World Cup. Hopefully, that does the same for England. But we'll have to see, we'll have to see. Qatar is next year. Luckily, we don't have to wait two years now. We can wait till next year. So let's see how that goes now. Well, that's enough for me. But anyway, Where's the season start? As always, like, subscribe and all that lot. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.